Today I wanted to start a beginner series. Uh, this one's going to go over sprites and how to import them and get them hooked into Clack. So um, once you get them imported, you can do interesting things with the colors as well. So I thought I'd show that as well. Um, so yeah, let's get started with just opening up After Effects or any program that can export GIFs with Alpha Channel. Um, as a PNG sequence and as a resolution that you want. Um, so I imported this guy. Uh, only has six frames. You can see it here. Uh, it has an alpha channel toggling on and off here. Um, so we know we're going to get this over in Unity as well if we export it as PNG with alpha. The frame rate is 25 frames per second, so that's going to be helpful when we import it. So let's go ahead and export this. Alright, so here's the export settings. So PNG sequence, RGB plus alpha, um, and let's export that. Alright. Let's head over to Unity and import those things. All right. So once they're imported, right click. Well, actually look in the inspector, change them to Sprite 2D UI. Um, make sure the input texture is alpha Hit apply. So this is going to give you a bunch of these little guys here. This is what we need to import into our animator. Um, let's go ahead and create that. Animator controller, let's call it electric. And then let's create animation objects. All right, and then let's pull out Let's stop this thing right here. Alright, so animation. I want the animation editor. Let's create a sprite here. Alright, so 2D object sprite. Oh, this electric. Alright, let's add a component. create a clip right here. Let's just do that. Alright. So now this thing's open. We can either go one by one by one by one, or we could filter it, which is a little bit quicker. We can just drop them all in here, which is amazing. So you... This is like the frames per second right here. So you want to take this down to 25. All right, so now it's just gonna, it's gonna play this accurately inside the timeline. All right, so now that we have set that set up, you can see it's kind of on the first frame guy we just made. You can see it's looping, right? That's because we have looping on in our animation object. Let's unfilter this guy. So here's our animation object and uh, our animation clip. So you can see over here in the specter has this little checkbox. So if you uncheck that, it stops looping. 
that's what we want to trigger these things through the OPZ. So I'll go ahead and turn that off. And you'll see on the last frame. The hang. So let's make a patch and map this to the OPZ. Uh, here are the mappings for the OPZ. You want to use a note number. Uh, let's go ahead and use 60 for this guy. So you can see this is right over here. Um, we know where that is in the OPZ. I have mine hooked in right now, so I can just start mapping. We'll make a patch. Call this patch. Electric. Open the patcher. Let's create a node input. And we want to map a channel 16. That's the motion track. And we're going to use a note number. And you can see this little number pops up here. So we wanted 60. Just so happens that 60 is the default, so we're just going to leave that. And then we're going to use output animator out. I'm going to connect the note to the normalized time. So this output correlates to our object over here. So we need to do select this node here drag our electric object over here it's going to automatically detect the controller which is this guy right here so i think we want to save this because we've done quite a bit of work we don't want to have anything crash when we hit run, okay? So we're gonna hit run and we're gonna see if 60 triggers a clip. Alright, so it's working, but you can see it's held on that last frame, right? We want it to vanish, so we want to a way to disable this. I'm going to go back in the animator. Right? And so let's add a property. And let's turn on enables. That's it. And do add a keyframe here All right what's the saying the whole thing is going to be disabled at this frame Let's try it again. So this is a bull object and this is animating it completely off at this last frame. And whenever you want to see your animation, you want to have this guy selected. And then you can scrub, you can see all the frames. But we can see it's turning off on that frame. This is probably what we want, but let's hit play and check it out. So it's disappearing. Alright, so what if we want to change the color after the fact, or we want to have some interesting ways to interact with this? I uh, found a couple different ways to do that. Um, they're all very different, so um, you can have it 
toggle through four different colors, or you can have it smoothly interpolate through four or five different colors, or you can just have it flash through four different colors really quickly, or you can hook all the color attributes through a knob. I'm cycle it like that. Um, you can do the saturation, color, brightness, and the alpha. So you can control all these with knobs. So I'll, I'm going to go through the clock patches really quick and show you how that's done. Alright, so our sprite number one. This guy is toggling through four states. So it's the same thing we had going on with our first sprite patch. So node input animator out. This time we put a float filter. So this is going to trigger zero to one every time the node's on. So it's just going to it's going to hit one which is going to trigger these states so it's going to go one two three four so every time we trigger a button it's just going to change to different states so I'll put in these color ramps there's a lot you can do in these gradients um, but i just chose to use it as a single color um, you could also use a color array. Um, so I did that later on, I'll show you that. And then once you have that hooked up, you drag and drop the sprite into here to get its color material node. So once that's all set up, let's go back and check it out. You have something that toggles those four different colors. So let's go on to the next one. Sprite number two. So in this one I did create a color array and you can just type in a number and you have as many colors you want in here which is pretty nice. So what this float animation is doing, it's taking a curve And it's cycling through the arrays and takes this, it averages out uh, these five different colors along that path. And then again, you want to drag and drop your sprite in there to grab the color out. So I up the speed on this guy so it would actually reach all those colors. Um, let's hit play on that. Alright, so you can see this guy interpolating through those gradients pretty smoothly. So this is a less steppy way of doing things. But on this, this is just a constant color that's being cycled. And this is uh, smoothly interpolating through these colors. Back to the patch. Yes, Alright, let's go to the next one. So this is similar, except ex instead of a float animation, uh, instead of a float filter, it's float animation. So, and this guy up the speed again this toggle. What this is going to do, this is going to take a curve and apply and go through these toggles in one curve. So it's going to do a, a very steppy, flashy type of animation, which is pretty cool. Um, so same thing, got the material color outs, put those guys in there. I map this to note 57, has a damp spring, animator out, drag and drop this guy over there. Um, so hit play on that. 
<laughs> you can see it flashing, which is which is pretty nice. Uh, you can turn this on and off for different kind of moments. So you can have all these stacked on top of each other and then hide and hide them which is just to have different variations, which is really neat. All right, so hit stop on that. And my last one, I hooked up all the knobs. So there are these guys right here. So one, two, and three, and four. I have, uh, let's see, one, two. So one is going to the hue, two is going to saturation, three is going to brightness, four is going to the alpha. Uh, again, we throw the flash right in there. You can see this is channel 16, knob number one, knob number two, three, four. And this will this this filter is gonna allow you uh, allow the knob to be mapped in a zero to one. So this bias is zero. This is gonna be the all the way to the left. And this is going to be all the way to the right. So let's check that out right now. All right, so hit this trigger here. All right, so dialing up the different colors, saturation. And then the brightness. And then finally alpha. So those are some interesting ways to use the sprites. Um, so as long as you get an alpha channel out, you'll be able to see it. Uh, if you don't have the alpha channel, it might just turn into a block of color. So that could be neat as well, so however you want to go about this, but I thought I'd show you guys different ways to use a clack cutter to manipulate color. Um, so yeah, this is the first of the beginner series. If you like the music in the background, that's done by Bolt. Um, feel free to grab a link to his music in the description. And I'll see you later.